So good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Professor Chi Chi Wang over here. So the Q pronounced like CH, and uh, you can just call my first name. And uh, also, uh, there is another professor, Professor Jacob White, who is going to be teaching about a quarter of this subject, particularly boundary element methods. So the class is going to meet uh, mostly on Monday and Wednesdays uh, from now to 11 a.m. and over here. So sometimes I can't make either the Monday class or Wednesday class, so we have to reschedule to a Friday class. And uh, uh, it's usually also this time. And the, the classroom may not be exactly this room. So when there is a Friday class, uh, I'll announce in ahead of time. And also the room is going to be announced uh, ahead of time. But if it's Monday, Wednesday, it's always going to be here. OK. And uh, another thing is that uh, how many of you are the first, uh, this is the first uh, class at MIT? Oh, fairly large amount of you. So at MIT, the classes are scheduled back to back. So let's say this one ends at 11 o'clock. There are classes that start at 11 o'clock. So that means you have uh, zero seconds to go from one class to another. Well, in practice, this means uh, the classes actually starts five minutes after its scheduled time. And ends usually, we try to end five minutes before the scheduled time. So you actually have greater than zero, strictly greater than zero time to walk from one place to another. And uh, uh, so usually I come in also a little bit late so that uh, I'll start the class at uh, 9.35. So that, uh, for example, today, those who already are familiar with the MIT system may come like at 9.35. So that's kind of uh, um, the usual thing for people who are at MIT for the first time. All right. So this class, uh, Numerical Methods for Partial Differential Equations, is uh, listed uh, with three numbers. So that means uh, people who are in the classroom come from very different backgrounds. So it's listed uh, in course two, which is uh, Mechanical Engineering, course six, Electrical and uh, Computer Science, and uh, course 16, Aerospace Engineering. And uh, usually there are also people from Physics and uh, Mathematics taking this class. So, so before I begin, I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, why we are teaching this class and uh, uh, what you expect to learn from it. Oh, first, uh, I, I'll start by some motivation of why, personally, I'm interested in this class. So I'm from Core 16, Aerospace Engineering. And uh, how many of you recognize uh, this thing I put on the screen? What is it? It's F35, right? So that's uh, supposed to be the newest and uh, uh, most advanced uh, fighter aircraft. And yet, uh, when people start to fly this machine, they notice uh, uh, when people start to fly this machine, they notice a very strange phenomenon called buffeting. So that means when the airplane is supposed to pull at very high angle of attack, it tries to maneuver, turn very quickly there is a shaking going on. And it's so bad that uh, some of the pilots cannot see what's displayed on the instruments when they are trying to turn at very high rates. So this buffeting phenomenon is actually not there when you are flying the older generation of uh, equivalent role aircraft, uh, the F-16. And uh, when people start to fly this one, uh, a lot more buffeting has been happening. So, so from one of the pilots' report, one obvious difference is that the F-16, uh, the F-35 shakes quite a bit at high G loadings and at high angles of attack, while the F-16 hardly shakes at all. This buffeting serves as a useful feedback, but it can also be disadvantageous. Several pilots have had trouble reading the information which is displayed on the helmet visor due to the buffeting. So why does it buff it? So there is a uh, interesting study that is uh, done both experimentally and computationally. And it's the computation that uh, we want to focus more in this class. So as you can see, there is one of the flight uh, visualizations. People actually make some kind of a smoke out of uh, the leading edge and see what is happening in the aerodynamics, what happens to the fluid flow. 
There is another study done completely in the computer, and that's what you're going to be learning how to do in this class. That uh, well, the basics of how how to do. You are not. We are not going to be talking about solving specific types of equations like Navier-Stokes equation over here. But we are going to be talking about how to solve equations in general. Okay? And uh, here, people solved the Navier-Stokes equation and basically predicted the same phenomenon as uh, uh, what is shown in the flow visualization. In the flow visualization, you see a coherent vortex, right? Going from the tip of the leading edge extension, basically where the smoke is generated, and it goes back coherently, and then the smoke puffs. Right? It goes incoherent. And that's also exactly what is shown in the computational fluid mechanics. So basically, you see the vortex called the blue region going coherently, and it bursts. And this is kind of a, one of the most uh, uh, state-of-the-art computations that predicts actually what happens dynamically in fluid mechanics. So similarly, uh, another application is in turbo machinery. That's a jet engine that propels one of these airplanes. And a jet engine works by compressing air through a large numbers of rows of compressors to very high temperature and very high pressure. And it goes through a combustion chamber that burns the air to even a higher temperature. And then the very high temperature air is supposed to do work to the turbo machinery to actually propel the aircraft. And the first row of the blades that extracts work from this combustion, it's supposed to withstand extremely hot temperatures. And nowadays, the temperature of this uh, uh, air uh, of this gas is well above the melting temperature of any metal you can design and, and uh, build. So basically, these rows of uh, uh, inlet guide vents or turbine blades, the air surrounding them is actually a higher temperature than their melting temperature. And that's why they have all these kind of holes to bleed cooler air, and by cooler air, it means air that is hotter than any oven you can uh, have in your house. It leads this uh, cooler air out of these holes to basically form a cooling film to prevent these blades from melting. And if they don't do jobs very well, like the one above, if you look at the trailing edge, it literally melted a little bit. Okay? And uh, uh, basically compared to the new one, down in here, you can see like uh, the shape of the trailing edge is no longer uh, intact. So how well the cooling air can cool these blades is another thing that is uh, very challenging to predict experimentally. Because uh, there is no, I mean, if there is no metal can withstand the temperature, there is no instrument, right? No flow measurement devices that you can actually put in there and actually measure what's going on there. You can only, after the fact, take the blade out and see, oh, this melted, this didn't. Actually, what happens, uh, and the best, uh, one of the best ways to actually figure out what happens is actually computation, is to solve the equations. If you solve the equations in your computer, you don't care if it is higher than the melting temperature of the metal or even higher than the temperature in the core of the sun. Right? You can do calculations that way. And here is one of the calculations that actually, this is one of the better calculations, uh, uh, better than what people used to use to build the turbines like these, who, that melted. So, so these newer ones actually predict the dynamic mixing of the hotter air, orange over here, and the cooler air, blue over here, that impacts the surface. So if you get hotter air over the surface, it's, the surface is going to get higher temperature. Right. So this is actually a uh, cut away from one of these uh, slots over here. Right. So, so this is the uh, air comes from inside over here, and uh, this is the surface over here. Right. So this is uh, some uh, aerospace applications of numerical solution of partial differential equations. And this class is about actually not just the aerospace applications, but numerical techniques for a wide range of partial differential equations useful in many science and uh, engineering applications, like turbo machinery, 
uh, like uh, uh, physics of uh, larger geological scales and uh, uh, astrophysics, uh, mechanical engineering, a lot of other things.